Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to episode 196 of the Guitar Builders Basics video podcast. Luthiers, tips, tricks and training from me, Ben Crow, at Crimson Guitars in the UK. That's a long intro. Good day. Okay, today's question is a rather interesting one. Uh, this is from Nick Stratton on YouTube. He says, hi Ben, I've had two differing opinions on how to get, a guitar, how to get into guitar building, and I would appreciate you being the tiebreaker. And um, on one hand, <coughs> I have the owner of guitar company, name redacted. I'm not in the business of promoting other guitar builders. <laughs> um, uh, Skirvison. I've got the owner of Skirvison, who's almost finished building me a custom swan. Why didn't you come to Crimson? Uh, saying the only way to learn without a course or proper training is to jump right in and start building with guidance from books, videos, etc. I'm assuming. And I have another voice telling me a better idea is to buy a cheap playing guitar and customize it and use that as a starting point for learning fretwork, network, standing, network, networking. We're going to start networking all our guitars together and uh, we're going to take over the world. Guitar based sentience. Hmm. Uh, standing tops, replacing hardware, etc. What are your thoughts? Thanks for everything you do. Uh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for everything you do, watching the videos and etc. <clears throat> I'm afraid I'm going to be absolutely no use whatsoever. Both are valid options. Okay. Uh, th there... The problem with diving straight in is that it assumes a certain level of competency with tools and machinery that a lot of people don't have and I didn't have, hell, I didn't have what I would class a basic level of competency with machine tools uh, when I started building guitars and I just spent two years building Baroque viola de gambas and instruments, you know, high-end instruments uh, at one of the top learning institutions in the world for learning how to build Baroque instruments, or at least what was. I'm, I'm not sure how good they are now, or sorry, what their focus is now. Both options are valid. I, the, the issue with jumping straight in and building a guitar is it, it is based on an assumption that you have a basic level of competency with, with tools, with chisels. Um, and and routers and bandsaws and or jigsaws or uh, scroll saws. The, the, yes, I just went through the first three methods of cutting out a guitar body that came to mind. Uh, the first time I used a scroll saw, I ended up giving the scroll saw away because I couldn't figure out. Uh, this is pre pre YouTube. Um, <laughs> Sheesh. Not pre-YouTube, but uh, pre-me knowing about YouTube, which is insane. Uh, I, I didn't know about how to tension a blade properly, and I didn't read the instructions properly, and I never got a good result out of a scroll saw. Uh, this is the, the bench-mounted ones. Uh, I, I left West Dean College, which was and possibly is one of the premier institutions for learning how to build Baroque instruments, uh, or early stringed musical instruments, and <clears throat> I'd never use a router, okay? Guitar building is very router-based. I'd, I'd only basically used a bandsaw and a planar thicknesser. Um, I didn't know the first thing about many, many, many things that we take for granted. And there is only so much that you can learn through, through watching videos or reading books, etc. There's the safety that comes with experience. Now, let me preface this by saying, yes, I have a guitar building school, okay? I, I could be slightly biased towards saying, come and learn at a guitar building school or go and have a lesson because, you know, we sell lessons. It's, it's part of what helps su support these videos, quite frankly. Um, okay, so there's, there's, there is that. Um, 
if you have that basic level of competency, I am the guy that says, jump in, just do it. You know, watch a video, watch it again, watch it again, and watch it while you're doing the task. <laughs> Don't watch TV while routing. Um, now, the only issue I've got with this, I personally have had issues with um, self-confidence. Um, do you know what? My issues with self-confidence are have been from one extreme to the other. I used to think I was the bee's knees, the dog's naughty bits. I was fantastic at everything I did. And, and this is, I, I, I blame my mother for this, um, from, a, from a young age. Oh, I'm amazing, I can do whatever I want. And I'm now here <coughs> teaching thousands of people what I know. And I have crippling self-doubt at, at times, thinking, oh, do I actually know what, uh, is that best? What, did, was that total bull that I just said? Um, now, where this does manifest, though, is if you are building your first guitar and you fail utterly, which you probably will, um, <laughs> I'm remembering my first guitar. Just be aware from the off that you probably will. Because the last thing I want is for you to get into guitar building, something that you've been thinking about for years, finally build yourself a guitar, realize that it's a pile of um, dog eggs, and, get, and just stop. Okay. Um, I should have stopped based on the quality of my work years ago. It, it took me a lot of rubbish guitars to get to a point where I was actually happy with what I was building. And uh, through various issues um, over, over the years. But um, the last 5%, the, the final fit and finish was never what I wanted it to be. And uh, that's got better in the last 10 years, say, five years. <laughs> since meeting Christopher um, but it takes doing it over and over and over and over again and it takes messing up over and over and over again to get good at guitar building now what's what's the question here um, how to get into guitar building do guitar building okay now the other option that Nick had was uh, buying a cheap guitar and then upgrading it. <clears throat> now, I have an ongoing argument, friendly discussion with Christopher and James. Christopher runs our school downstairs. He is a phenomenal luthier. And James is now the MD of Crimson Guitars and you know, runs the company and has a lot of experience as a touring tech repair person and guitar builder. And uh, they say that the best guitar builders are made out of people who have started as repair people. Okay, now Christopher went to Roberto Venn and studied guitar building, but he also spent two or three years working as a repair person in several incredibly busy um, Arizona-based, I think, uh, guitar shops. My phone's on. Oh my gosh. I am totally just naughty. The horror. Yes, turn flight mode on. Crikey. Hi. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. I hope that wasn't messing the audio up. Um, what did I say? What was I saying? I've completely lost what I was saying now, actually. <sighs> Repair people, there we go. Okay, so if you spend two or three years and you set up five guitars a day, 
you've set up one and a half thousand, two thousand guitars. There we go. Yes, I just counted on my fingers. I'm not numerically uh, clever. Um, <laughs> this is turning into a um, Ben bears his soul on his inadequacies video. And I do see the argument for that. Christopher's setup work, Christopher's final finish um, with regards to how the guitar is playing is second to none. He is phenomenal at that particular job. He's also phenomenal at many other jobs, but that is something he is. He sets up every single one of my personal guitars goes through him. I say it's because I'm lazy the, the, and, and you know, have the power of delegation, but it's really because he just does a better job than I do. Um, and that's it. I mean, he sets up every single master build guitar that goes out of here now because he's that good at it. Um, and that comes with experience. So there is something to be said with buying a cheap guitar and then customizing it. The issue though is that is getting into guitar repair. That's not into getting into guitar building. Okay. Um, I, for example, okay, you buy a cheap guitar, you then have to strip it down in order to start playing with stain, which is one of the things that Nick mentioned here. Um, you, you, you can't really strip down a lacquered guitar um, easily. You know, it involves fire or heat or the scrapers. I stripped down the first guitar that I stripped down. I had a 10 inch um, Bowie knife that was particularly sharp and I wasn't gonna go skin an elephant anytime soon. So I used that to scrape the lacquer off. It took ages. Um, blunted the knife in the end, which was sad. Um, but, I mean, once you've stripped a guitar down once, you don't necessarily want to do that again. Uh, and it's the same thing with the neck. You, you will probably have a neck that has got fretting issue, fret issues, okay? That's fine. Repair frets. Refret, maybe. In fact, do multiple refrets. Do multiple setups. That's, that is good, but it's not teaching you how to cut fret slots, it's not teaching you how to shape the neck, how to radius the fretboard, um, etc. Uh, there are, what I'm trying to say is there are two different skills. There is the build, which I'm particularly good at, and there is the final fettling and fit and finish and finish and lacquer and oil and all of that, which isn't necessarily my strongest point uh, of the part of the job. I don't enjoy fret work. I just don't enjoy it. Um, and, and that's fine. So I would say do both. I really would, okay? The, the happy medium is kit guitar, okay? Um, one of my biggest regrets with regards to guitar building was that I was, I was arrogant enough to think that because I'd built um, other instruments, not very many, but I'd built other instruments before I started. From day one, when I said, oh, I'm starting guitar building, the, one of the questions was, oh, do you make the necks as well as the bodies? Or do you make them from raw wood? <laughs> um, and uh, I always said, oh, yes, of course I make the necks as well. But I do think that the first couple of guitars I should probably have bought a neck or at the very very least bought a radius and slotted fretboard uh, uh, and it comes with yeah it, it's about doing it over and over and over again um, but doing it in an intelligent order now using a router using a bandsaw or a jigsaw to cut the guitar, guitar body out making templates, all of that, you can have a neck. I just happen to have one of our kit guitars on, on the workbench. Um, you can have a neck that you can then put into four or five different bodies. And I would really suggest that that is a good way to do it. Buy a neck, even if the neck is off the cheap guitar that you're talking about, 
uh, or if it's a good kit neck, see Crimson Guitars, uh, make five bodies over time. One of the biggest mistakes that I see is that somebody will build a couple of guitars and then suddenly say, hey, I'm a guitar builder, I'm going into production. And they end up making six or 10 uh, guitars at once. I've got this idea for a semi-acoustic, I've got this idea for a small-bodied semi-acoustic, I've got this idea for something with a strange, I'm gonna stop talking about sound holes and semi-acoustics, um, ergonomic guitar, I've got this idea for a through neck, I've got a single cut idea, but I'm gonna put X, Y, Z, bum, bum, etc. And they go and they build six or seven instruments. Uh, every single one of those instruments, because they are young in the craft, there is some mistake. And it's the same mistake on all seven, because they haven't made that mistake on the first of the seven, realized it's a mistake, and then gone back and reevaluated what they're doing. Uh, <laughs> it's insane. It really is. Slow down. Build one at a time. Uh, build one part at a time. As I was saying, build five or six bodies over time and don't worry about the neck, okay? Figure out how to do the neck pocket and practice the neck pocket until you get neck pockets right. I used to build through neck guitars because I was scared of, set, of, of routing out neck pockets because I was bad at making templates. I should have spent so much more time making templates than, than I did because straight away I would have been making better instruments with better fitting necks. Uh, I, I, I ended up building through necks which are arguably more, they're, they're technically difficult in, in different ways uh, because I wanted a perfect neck joint, basically. And, uh, <laughs> and then I messed up on uh, neck break angles, for example. So, so there we go. I, I would say do both. And I'm, I realize this isn't uh, a good way. I realize this isn't really an answer, to be honest. Uh, now, I bootstrapped this entire operation. Okay, I had, um, uh, I shared a single car garage with something like 18 racing bikes and other bits and pieces. I had space for a workbench and a little bench behind me with, with a couple of routers on them and a Dremel. Um, and I just immersed myself in guitar building. Okay, now I watched as many, I didn't, there was no such thing as YouTube videos. I read as many books as humanly possible. I've, I've checked the links below, seriously. The, um, yes, there are affiliate links. Uh, but it's still a book that you damn need, that you damn need. Uh, I, I read those books cover to cover and cover to cover, and I still do now, okay? Uh, I read a lot of books. I bought all of the guitar magazines, and I wasn't interested in the, hey, this is how you play this riff thing at the back. I was interested in the reviews of the guitars, and I was interested in what the luthier was doing and then what the reviewer thought of that luthier and i was like oh okay fine well this this reviewer likes recessed scratch plates this reviewer likes um uh, compound radius fretboards oh he's going do lally over this strange nut material uh, maybe i'll think about that and over time um i knew where i wanted to go I knew what was viable, what was not necessarily a good idea, and I also knew some things that I wanted to do that weren't advisable, but I wanted to do anyway. But in my head, I was educated, and then I, and I started building, and I ended up doing exactly what I didn't want to do at the beginning. I didn't want to build derivative guitars. I didn't want to make um, something that looked vaguely like a telly. I didn't want to make something uh, that vaguely looked like a, a Les Paul. Um, 
I wanted to have strange, spiky, lovely guitars with, with modern shapes and ergonomics and belly calves and, you know, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and that's still in, a part of Crimson to a certain extent, but I've also realised that people buy what people want to buy and they want to buy Tillys and Lisbos and Strats and, and just better versions of them. And that's what we do now. Um, the heart of the matter is practice. Practice as much as humanly possible, build as much as humanly possible. I, I really, 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 I'm at war with myself. I want you to come on a guitar building course with us. Of course I do. You know, I want to meet you. Why not? Um, if you don't have experience with tools, find some way to get experience with tools. If it's a course with us, cool. If it's um, men with sheds, uh, if it's a, uh, there are now, I can't remember the name of the damn thing, but you, you go, there's workshops full of tools and you go along of an evening and pay a bench fee and, and just make stuff. Um, get some sort of supervision. Go to grandpa. He's probably used tools. They used to in those days. Um, uh, get somebody to show you the basics of how to use a router, the basics of how to use a bandsaw, etc. Watch as many videos as you possibly can. You don't even have to stick inside of our channel. I watch, I still watch now, daily, videos of people making things. From jewelers through to um, leather workers through to just furniture makers, people making high-end cabinetry, etc. Um, invariably, I will watch a video and say, hey, I could make that, or, oh my gosh, I could make that, I could do that in a cha-ching, and there's another bill added to my huge list of things I want to try at some point. But I'm always learning. Uh, I am now, I must be 160, 170 guitars into, into my career, something like that. Um, it's slowing down at the moment. Um, but I'm still learning every single day. And, uh, and that's both from doing and from watching other people doing things. And it's not necessarily just watching guitar builders. I watch as much as possible outside of this field. Um, and it all, I just remember the coolest idea I've had. <laughs> okay, um, that's the next video. Guitar building, just do it. And uh, good luck, and don't get discouraged. Um, failure is literally what brought me here. Messing up and messing up and messing up. As long as you don't make the same mistake more than a couple of times. More than a couple of couple of times, whatever that is. A couple of times cubed. Um, Try not to make the same mistake again and again. Uh, you'll find, find new mistakes to make and practice and learn. And uh, in 20 years, with lots of blood, sweat and tears and huge crippling amounts of debt, you too can have a guitar factory. <laughs> Thank you for watching. You guys are awesome. I uh, will see you in the next video and, uh, and in the next podcast. Be good. I sincerely hope my phone didn't totally mess that shoot up. <laughs> Cheerio, bye.